the origin of choice. How does your mind control your behavior? Whenever someone does something stupid, they'll often blame the circumstances at hand for their own personal error. I had to eat that whole pack of cookies because I was hungry. I punched that horse because I was scared. That lady was just too darn attractive for me to not cop a feel on the subway. We are, apparently, at the mercy of our human instincts. Except that's not true at all. And we're going to find out why in our video. The beautiful brain. Does your mind control your behavior? Number 3. Helpless Humans We are animals. And like all animals, when something stimulates our senses, we cannot help but react. This was the prevailing view among psychologists for quite some time. But in 2014, German neurobiologist Martin Heisenberg offered a different assessment of how the brains of biological creatures determine their actions. In his paper, The Beauty of the Network in the Brain and the Origin of the Mind in the Control of Behavior, Heisenberg argues behavior is not merely a response to stimulus, but an act of creative problem-solving on the part of the organism in question. Your actions are a unique solution from which you may learn but whose origin often remains a mystery. We are not reactionary creatures that see something and automatically do another thing. When we encounter an event requiring thought, our ultimate response is determined by our mind's ability to find one solution from many. We are offered a range of solutions by our brains, each one being informed by mental processes developed through biological evolution. But the act of choosing an option comes from somewhere else. So, Martin Heisenberg believes. Martin Heisenberg is the son of physicist Werner Heisenberg, who is known for the uncertainty principle and for lending his surname to TV's favorite cancer-riddled meth cook. Oh, and he's also married to a countess, if that makes any difference at all. Heisenberg begins his paper by discussing how biological behavior originated as a means of controlling direction in a literal and metaphorical sense. If you can't move, reach, smell, grab, dance, shank, or moonwalk, you cannot control your future. However, through the development of behavior, you are now in charge. A tree can't stop you slicing open its babies to feast on their delicious innards. But you can stop someone doing that to your kids through your physical ability to move and respond, and thus you are able to help sustain your species. The power to move came early in the evolutionary process, with prokaryotes gaining this trait and multicellular organisms building on this to a point where they could actively choose in which direction they wanted to go. These multicellular beings adapted to form body parts to help with this newfound trait, such as wings, legs, and arms, as well as antennae to make a more informed decision regarding their destination. But at this point, the number of behavioral options for our multicellular friends became infinite. They could go anywhere they wanted. And just like Netflix, this provided them with a perpetual dilemma. How do you choose out of an infinite number of options? Easy. You grow yourself a brain. Number 2. Random Choice The early multicellular organisms condensed their neuronal networks into what we now call a brain in order to process the massive amount of behavioral options available to them. Now, you may think that since the main criterion for biological organisms is always survival, choosing a suitable behavior would therefore be easy. What can I do that has the lowest possible chance of making me dead? But most situations are more complex than this. In many cases, it may not even be apparent which is the better option. So, to deal with this and prevent all life forms from standing still in a perpetual state of indecision, brains have learned to deal with the concept of randomness. It doesn't matter how well prepared you are or how developed your ancestors were, no creature on Earth will ever develop the ability to know precisely which action to take in any given situation. Life, and indeed existence, is not that certain. If I eat a thousand pancakes today, it may seem like a bad idea at the time, 
But tomorrow the whole world could freeze over and I'll be the one sitting pretty with four inches of fat covering my toasty warm skeleton. To cope with the uncertainty of life, the brains of biological organisms progressed to a point where decisions were fluid and problems never faced before could be dealt with through the development of a new response. Heisenberg asks why evolution has never removed randomness from the equation, but immediately answers his own question by pointing out how crucial it is to the evolutionary process. It is only by dealing with and adapting to new things that biological organisms can improve their behaviors and sustain themselves ever longer. If life consisted of organic automatons which behaved exactly the same in every situation, the random events wrought upon it by the universe means they'd likely have an extremely short lifespan. The ability to respond to random events allows creatures to transcend themselves, to become more than they were originally made to be. Ah, oh, how sweet. That's like something you'd read on one of those life-affirming memes your aunt can't stop sharing since the divorce. Number 1. Moderation Behavior doesn't just start and end with a system of stimulus response. For an organism to whittle down its choices and improve itself, it must analyze and moderate its actions. This moderation is achieved through the use of moods, emotions, and feelings which influence your choices. If eating poison ivy sandwiches didn't switch on your pain receptors and make you super unhappy, you could eat a whole bunch of them all day without ever realizing you were killing yourself. And if making sweet love didn't feel so darn good, reproduction wouldn't be half as attractive a behavior as it otherwise is. I mean, let's be honest. Without those nice tingly feelings in your downstairs area to distract you, the whole process of intercourse is kind of gross and icky. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Should my mouth be full of earwax by the end? Anyway, the moderation enabled through sensory and emotional experiences leads us to believe that certain actions are selected according to the circumstance in which an organism finds itself. But our behaviors, well chosen to fit a situation, are rooted in something deeper than mere evolutionary responses. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to make mistakes, and we wouldn't be able to learn from them and subsequently improve. Heisenberg illustrates this by citing the example of the Drosophila melanogaster, aka the fruit fly. Fruit flies live for about five days, and in this time, they will encounter events which force them to make a decision. These flies have no prior experience to base their decisions on, so they must try to cope by trying out an action, judging it as a success or failure, and subsequently developing a regular behavior as a result. It is this random stream of actions, Heisenberg asserts, which represents the fruit fly's natural behavior. This is how brains work, and if we are to understand them further, we must do so from a perspective which considers sensory input as one small part of the process. There must be something more, but what this is, we just aren't sure. We're going to explore this further in our bonus video the case for free will, which you can watch in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, 
did. Already though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality, visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video. Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strangemysteries.